Hi there, this is John from Commercial Real Estate Online. Welcome to the program. This is the video show where I like to share tips, tools, and ideas in commercial real estate sales, leasing, and property management. Now, this is the website here if you haven't checked us out before, particularly regards sales, leasing, and property management with properties around the world. So the website is commercial-realestate-training.com. So let's go down into today's program. I'm going to take you into this particular matrix here, and the topic will be all about the ultimate brokerage guide to finding listings in today's market. And that may be helpful for you when it comes to finding those listings and converting listings over time. Now, one particular thing I should mention here, and it is of note, yesterday at the website, I published this particular article, which are the keys to staying motivated in commercial real estate brokerage. So check out that particular article, have a listen because there's lots of ideas there that can help you with staying motivated, staying on task, and of course, getting results in commercial real estate. So now let's go into this particular matrix. So what is it all about? The ultimate brokerage guide to finding listings. Now these things here, they are part of a system. Now you could say that you want more listings. Of course you do. So what I would like to suggest to you is that you have a serious look at these six elements that I'll take you through. The six elements of your working day, your working week, and what you're doing within these particular things. Keep your real estate business simple. That's the message. Don't complicate it. Keep it simple, develop your system, and work within your system. That is absolutely crucial to getting market share over time. If you want more listings, you simply must repeat certain things every day to connect with new people and current people about commercial property. That's really it. But how do you do that? Well, these things here will help you. So let's go into them. And of course, whilst you're here, write these down, which are the items of one through to six. And then I'll take you into the particular items and give you the subsets around that. So let's go further. Number one. Before you do anything, you have to understand exactly what sort of services you are offering and why. Now, ultimately, this is your career. This is your real estate business. What services do you want? What services should you provide? Now, sales and leasing, they go hand in hand. They are linked, of course. Property management is standalone. You could say that property management is also linked to leasing but property management is a different service entirely. So I won't cover off on that particularly today. I'll focus on brokers and agents that work in sales and in leasing. So what are your services? Let's have a look at sales. Who are you going to work for within sales? Now, there are two different directions to head into. As a seller's agent, as a buyer's agent. Now, I've colored them differently, deliberately so. The fact of the matter is, if you control the listing stock, you will control the market and your career has a greater potential of thriving over time. In other words, you control the listing stock, the inquiry comes to you. The buyer's agent approach is totally different. It's quite common to see that seller's agents are very successful in the industry over time. Buyer's agents do things differently and they work with the buyers. So they don't have the listing stock. These agents do. So make your choice. Are you going to work with the stock or are you going to work with the client, which is your buyer? Most agents would work over here by choice. Think about it. Make your choice. Let's go to number two. As a leasing agent. Now again, I've colored this deliberately so. There is a major difference between working for landlords and working for tenants. If you're going to work for tenants, make sure you choose the larger tenants, the corporate tenants to work for, because they will require your services more frequently and the services they require will be larger. And of course, they should appoint you and pay your commission. But let's go over here, because here you control the listing stock again. So do you want to work with the listing stock or do you want to work with the tenants? It's your choice. Over here, the business is good. Over here, the business is different. I'm not saying you shouldn't work with tenants, but decide 
which direction you should head into. Now, let's just take one step back up here and say, if you're going to work in sales and leasing, the best way to do so is to work exclusively so. In other words, when you get a listing in sales as a seller's agent, you need an exclusive listing. When you get a listing in leasing as a leasing agent and you're working with landlords, get an exclusive listing. That's the message. Open listings are a waste of time, a waste of your time. And open listings are far harder to dispose of over time. So there you go, defining your services offered. Make your choices. You've got to understand what your services are before you go any further. So then you go into the zone of defining your client types. Now put some of the major clients here for you, for you to think about. Now in my view, the investors and the business owners are two of the most significant channels of opportunity in commercial real estate. You can get a lot of business from these two slots of opportunity. There are others, of course, and I'll cover those in a moment. But let's go over here. The investors. So if you're going to work with investors, start grading them, prioritizing them, set the property types that they want, set the timing that they want to work to and the value. So the investors, everyone that you talk to, should be categorized, buying or selling. That's the message. Now, business owners in your location, I said to you that there's plenty of business here. Absolutely. 110%. A lot of business here. Some business owners lease, some business owners own the properties that they're in. Either way, you can help them. Connect with them. So those two channels, the investors and the business owners, are the most rewarding channels of client activity in commercial real estate. Now, you can work with property developers. That's a bit different. And I'll go into that in another video. That's why there's no subsets here at the moment. There are some other people that you can work with, and I'll put them here. These are the groups of people that you can connect into frequently over time for extra business. And this will be another video again, because there's lots of different opportunity here. The franchise groups, the receivers, the managers, accountants, funds managers, that sort of thing. So most of your business will be in with investors, and with business owners. Let's go to number three, defining your territory. Set your primary zone of focus. That will be geographical. Set the roads, the boundaries, the highways, the freeways, the suburbs, the precincts, because 80% of your business has to come from that zone. Don't make it too big, but if indeed, if it is too big, then break it down into subsets because you can't spread yourself too far initially. So if you're working a very large primary zone of contact, then break it down into five or six subsets or precincts. Now the secondary zone, I've just put that here for reference. This is another zone of activity that you don't mind taking business from, but only 20% of your business will come from that. So just remember that, make your choices, understand where your zones are. Let's go to item four, setting your property types and sizes. The reason you do that is that you can then focus into the business types, the property types you're going to focus into. And of course, some are more rewarding than others. That's why you focus on the types and the size. So office property is a very common channel of opportunity, retail as well, and also industrial. So you could say that they are the big three, office, retail, industrial. There are others here, which I will go into at a later time into the subsets to help you with that. But office, industrial and retail are all very, very strong as market segments. Tourism is very special. Businesses and hotels, hotels, motels, all very special again. So make your choice. Let's go to number five. Once you've made your choice from the previous subsets, you can then set aside and set apart the market knowledge that you need. And that will be prices, It'll be rents, supply and demand. And then one thing you should be doing here is checking out the new approvals coming through in the development activity in your town or city. Find out where the developments are approved and look at the approval pipeline of new developments coming up. That's something that many agents just ignore or don't know too much about. And that is an amazing channel of new business. New projects, new developments, renovations, realignments to different zoning, that sort of thing. Number six. 
establishing a contact system. So this is the high level of a contact system. In priority, these are the best ways to generate new business from a contact system. Number one, via the telephone. Number two, street canvassing. That's door knocking, leaving your card. Number three, direct mail. Number four, direct email. So why have I prioritized these? Well, the fact of the matter is these two here allow you to engage with people by conversation. That is how you'll generate most of your new business. These two things. Over here, if you're sending out direct mail pieces, which are, is still very good, make sure you try and follow it up with a telephone call. That's just a subset of information that I'll try and share with you in a later video. Direct email is last on the list because it doesn't work that well at all. It's simply delete, delete, delete. The person you send the email to will delete it, generally speaking. So if you want high conversions, you've got to work number one, number two, and number three. And in another video, I'll show you how to do that as well. So that is the particular group of items here that you should consider to find more new listings in your location. And don't forget to visit the website which is commercial-realestate-training.com. And I have got an article here regards that, that you could go to and print. And this is the article, Faster Ways of Finding Listings in Commercial Real Estate Brokerage Today. So go to the website and make sure you're printing that article off and reading it. So this is John Highman signing off for now. I look forward to catching you again very soon online with more tips, tools, and ideas in brokerage around the world. Catch you soon.